Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to this event. And we've just heard an absolutely inspirational talk uh, before mine. Um, my name is Sudha Kaul. I'm a teacher by profession and a learner by experience. Today, I'd like to talk to you about three people who have made a lot of difference to my life and I think to the life of others who have come across my journey. Sorry. <laughs> this one will. Okay. Being a teacher, I will start at the very beginning. And those of you who have sound, seen Sound of Music will remember that's what Julie Andrews said, let's start at the very beginning. So I start with the letters A, B, C. Leading on to the le next letter D, which is diversity, which is the main issue that I would like to talk about. I think the three letters actually encapsulate certain values which all of us as people sh should remember, sometimes practice, sometimes forget, are not even aware of it, and they are attitude, belief, and catalyst. What do I mean by attitude? Since I'm talking about diversity, I'm talking about differences, I think the first thing we all need to do is to have a positive attitude. A positive attitude means what? That we acknowledge something is different, but that's not enough. I think we need to accept it. And more importantly, we need to respect it. And only then can we as individuals be what I call an advocate for disability or for anything. So I start with my first story. This is my son Arjun, my greatest teacher. Arjun was born 48 years ago. And soon after, we realized that something was wrong. So my husband Om and I then set off, as parents do, hunting for a diagnosis. Remember, this was 48 years ago when medical services, especially in the field of what later on was his diagnosis, was not really very common. So from pillar to post, from hospital to hospital, from city to city, even across the seven seas to England, we finally came up with a diagnosis. Arjun had cerebral palsy. We had no clue what that meant. We were told that this is an incurable condition. And all that we could do with him was to provide physiotherapy. So that was a challenge, because at that time, there were, weren't very many physiotherapists available in our city. But we were lucky enough when we went to England to a very well-known center called the Bobart Center to find that there was such a person in Calcutta called Mrs. Ibarra, who was a god save for all of us. And we came back. By that time, Arjun was three years old. And we could see that he was not quite responsive to everything we said. And so we began another round of doctors and went to a very famous hospital in another city, Bombay, to a very famous uh, doctor, a pediatrician, who said, what we need to do with Arjun is an IQ test. Arjun, of course, predictably, didn't at all, at all respond or cooperate. So we were given another diagnosis. Cerebral palsy, mentally retarded, could not perform on an IQ test. So with that second diagnosis, we came back. Soon we saw that Arjun was having convulsions. So we started our third round of doctors, and again went to the best neurologists in the city. The neurologist had one look at him, gave medication, and said, look, there's nothing else that we could do besides giving medicine. So what do we do as parents? Just give him love and care. Well, my husband and I thought love and care is fine. That's what we do when we live together with everybody in this community and our family. 
but surely, surely there's something else that we can do. And we thought love and care is not enough. So with a group of friends we got together and we just felt because we have the right attitude, because we feel that we have acknowledged that Arjun has a problem, we have acknowledged that something should be done, surely we can do something more, we can become advocates. Mind you, at that time, words like advocate were not part of our vocabulary. We were just parents who felt we have to do something. And that was the beginning of my organization, which was then called the Spastic Society. We had Arjun and we had Madhuri, who I'll talk about shortly. And in Bhaliganj military camp, under a tin shed, we started a little school. That school had, has grown, has become an institute. But what we had in that school and what we have in the organization is a group of people from different fields who have the right attitude. They had the right attitude, they had the right um, feelings for what they did. And from a small little school, this organization, I'm proud to say, has now become a training and teaching institute. It's a place of joyful learning and I can say that with pride. Why did this happen? Because we had the belief. What did we believe in? We believed that everybody has a potential, irrespective of diagnosis, irrespective of caste, creed, irrespective of where you came from. Everybody has intrinsic value which we need to look at and look, up, look for. And only then can we make a difference to people who we work with, people we live with, and people that we bond with. This bond is extremely important. And the person who taught me that was Madhuri, who we affectionately call Me Too, the co-founder of the Indian Institute of Cerebral Palsy. I met Madhuri, as I mentioned a little earlier, with her mother, Saroj, at our therapist's chamber. I was struck by her twinkling eyes and her absolutely enchanting smile. She just looked at me and challenged and said, you need to do some, you know, I said it, she couldn't speak, that you need to do it. get on with it, you need to do something about it. So with Arjun on one side, with a diagnosis of cerebral palsy, mentally retarded as it was termed then, and a bright girl, a bright mind trapped in a disobedient body. We actually, I've always said laughingly over all these four decades, we have filled the gap. We have opened our, our, our institute to people who have, may have severe learning problems, severe cognitive delay, and to bright young people who have so much to offer. Me too, as you can see in the photograph, uh, did not have any control over any part of her body except her head. She threw this challenge at us. She wanted to learn. She couldn't write. So we had to learn and she gave us this opportunity for us to learn and to more, learn more and discover more about how people with cerebral palsy could be educated. Mitu was a wonderful artist and won many an award and all she did that was with her head pointer. She always said she hated it but it was her lifeline. Me too taught us that we needed to bond together as human beings and share our mistakes and share our values and share our problems so that together we could make a team that could carry us forward. Which leads me to my last letter of the alphabet, catalyst. Catalyst is something that you all know. A catalyst is someone who can make a difference someone who uses his or her knowledge to actually move forward, to make a change. And catalyst can be somebody who is committed, is competitive. But the main thing a catalyst does is to move beyond themselves forward. And here's my catalyst, Shati. 
Shati came to my organization when she was a young girl and this was in 1980s. She is a computer teacher. She worked for a corporate house who believed in social corporate responsibility, though at that time this word had not been coined. But she came to our NGO to buy greeting cards, paintings drawn by Me Too and others, which we sold as greeting cards to do some fundraising. So Shati came, placed an order and came back a week later to pick up the order. This was Bali Ganj where we had three little rooms, that was our school. So she couldn't escape any of the students and she met Mitu. Mitu looked at her and carried on doing her work in the classroom. She was typing out her lesson with the head pointer and Shadi was fascinated. Mitu of course said, called her and introduced her to other children in the classroom young boy called Raja. I mean, Raja discovered that Shati was a computer teacher. He looked straight at her and said, why can't you come and teach here? That totally floored Shati. And in her own words, she said, I went back to my office and I thought, this corporate job is not for me. I need to get back. I need to do something. And that's how Shati came to us. In those early years, technology or assistive technology as we call it now, was unknown in India. We had several young students like me too who needed some kind of technological input so that they could actually function in their classroom as students. So Shati then decided that she would become an inventor. That is actually a drawing, it took me a long time to find it. She thought instead of having a head switch which didn't look nice and Mita wasn't very happy with it, she would try and actually devise and invent her own what we call homegrown access. What did she do? She had two little jacks which she put onto the typewriter so that Mita could operate. What you can't see there is a little wooden box and that was meant to be a switch. Well, in all honesty, it didn't quite work out. But it was the beginning for this catalyst to start off on her journey of discovery and to get in touch with the IITs and particularly Kharagpur, who was next door to Calcutta, and start off on this journey of inventing and working with people with disability on 80 solutions, assistive technology solutions for people with communication disorders. And I, if you see on the, on the, on the slide here, me too went on to actually write out a program. She became a computer program and she even wrote out a program for Leander Pays. Just one of the things she did amongst the many, many, many accolades that she deserved and deserved. Shati, of course, apart from being a computer teacher, had other talents which we didn't know when she joined us, which was script writing and she's a filmmaker. And she felt that her job was not just confined to teaching computers to children in a little room and that people with disability and others required a platform where they could actually talk about what they did, about their life, their aspirations and that's what she did. She started making films. She made a lot of short films and then very recently she made a film called I am Jija. And that film has won a national award. So you see, by just getting people together from different walks of life, from different experiences, you can make a difference. And this is the philosophy of my organization, which is encapsulated in four words, care. Remember I mentioned to you that the doctor in Bombay no, the neurologist in Calcutta had said to me, what your son deserves is love and care. And indeed, we did that, except our definition of care is and was different. Care, from my perspective, stands for Chit, Acharan, Rakshan and Esha. If you have the knowledge and you have the right attitude, 
then you can provide the protection to people who require it, not in terms of protecting from the, from the ills of the world, but protecting them from not having an opportunity to learn. So the basis of our care is, found, is founded on Asia education. And it's so important to provide that opportunity, which is what we have tried to do. So as a society, if you want to make a difference, a society can only be considered to be <coughs> vibrant if you empower. It can only be strong, it can only be inclusive and only be socially responsible if you remember the letters A, B, C. So I have told these three stories with one purpose in mind. Two of my uh, people who inspired me were children with disability and their families. The third person had nothing to do with disability. So any one of us, you can be the catalyst. You can be the agent of change. You don't have to be part of the inner circle because you can build a bridge to make society much more equitable and much more inclusive. And as Oscar Wilde said, nothing that is worth knowing can be taught. And it's so true. And I'm sure you'll all agree, if you have to understand it, you have to live it. You have to feel it and you have to experience it. Or you have to share the experience of other people. You know, words which you hear around all the time, you read in the papers, Vivian, autistic, just to read a few, mentally ill, mentally retarded, I'm different, I'm not normal. These are all words. These are the words which are commonly read and heard. I think it's about time for us to change this discourse. And who will do it? Because just remember that persons with disability are people first. It's just a very simple point that I want to make and leave you with. So come, let us all join together and be advocates for inclusion. Thank you.